Hello and welcome to this second tutorial in the project panel series and for this project we're going to be looking at this little icon down here which is the new items icon as well as we're going to be popping into resource central to look at some of the templates that are available and I want to show you how to download and to use those for your projects. Okay now all of the items that can be found in this new item icon sequences, files and all the rest of them can also be found at the top in your file menu. File, New and there's a whole series of different things. In addition to the um, items that are in the new items icon, you have the ability to create a brand new project and also a Photoshop file. And if I were to click Photoshop file for demonstration purposes, a new Photoshop file the correct size as my sequence would be made. Click OK. It asks me to save it. I'm going to save it on my desktop. Just call it Test 2. Return and a new item is added to my project panel as well as a Photoshop opens with a little warning menu and I can click OK and there I have a blank completely blank new Photoshop file that I can then add layers to and start to modify as I wish and everything I update in this file will be updated in Premiere Pro. So for example if I uh, was to draw with white in this particular one I'll make it say a, a very bright red Click OK, make my uh, brush nice and big, and then click on here just to draw a few images. Do File Save, and then pop back to Premiere Pro. There I have the item updated. So it automatically updates whatever I do, and as I change the item in Photoshop, it's going to be updated in Premiere Pro. However, I'm not going to use that rather bizarre looking file, so I'm going to select it, and I'm going to use this little icon down here which is the clear icon and I can do one of two things I can either click clear and it'll go or if I want I can drag it and drop it into the little dustbin and it's gone right now what else can I create well with this new icon I can create new sequences um, and each new sequence will bring us to the same menu window that we have when we originally created our sequences so a quick way of creating new sequences and we can rename it whatever we want um, I can also create offline files and you might say well why do I want to create an offline file well say you know a piece of footage is coming from someone else and you know roughly how long it's going to be you know what pixel aspect ratio what size it's supposed to be but you don't actually have the file but you want to go ahead with your editing you can click offline file and it will create it the size that you want it to be and you can click OK and then you can write all kinds of metadata so where is it going to come from what a description of what the file is going to be like call it whatever name you want to call it at the moment and you can make sure whatever length it's going to be so I might say at the moment it's 10 seconds but I could turn around and say well actually you know what I want it to be 20 seconds long then I click OK and there is my offline file ready for me to include in my editing workflow waiting for when the actual file arrives and of course I can drag it down on my timeline and there it is as an offline file useful as a placeholder in case you want to use it at another point. So let's get rid of that one. What else can we create? We can create titles from here. Now we also know that we can create titles from our title menu. We've got new default still, default role and default crawl. I would generally create new default roles and default crawls from this menu here. So title, new, role and crawl and possibly even template from here. But when it comes to creating a new default still, I generally speaking would create it straight from this icon. New default still, called title 01, click OK. The titler has started and we can create a new title in there. There's a whole series of tutorials on this so I won't do any more on that. And our title is added to our project panel. Another really valuable item that we can have from our new items icon is something called bars and tones. When you click on bars and tones, it creates something that's exactly the same size as your composition once again. Click OK. And you'll see that added to my project panel is a industry standard bars and tones. Now if I double click that to open it up in my source monitor, you can see that it is uh, exactly the right calibration level to be able to use for your monitor to make sure it's right and also to calibrate it for TV. And uh, if I add that to my, my timeline, to my sequence, and shift along my actual uh, footage what we have here is a bars and tones as a header to the footage that I actually use if I just click play my sound systems off so you probably can't hear this but that's at minus 12 DB bang on to where it should be and this is especially useful when you're outputting to tape 
to send off to, say, a broadcaster. You add a series of bars and tones at the beginning of your footage, and that can then help them to calibrate their equipment. So bars and tones are very useful indeed. And if we click on this again, we have black video. Why would we want black video to be created? Well, black video can work as a wonderful um, underneath titles. It can be as a background. You can use it as a blend, so you can blend it with other layers. So if I bring down my, th my uh, boat into harbour down here, um, and I can bring in my black video on top, and if I wanted to, I can stretch the black video to any length that I like. Let's zoom in a bit. Black video is completely uh, synthetic, so I can make it any length I like. And if I wanted to, I could select it, go to my effects controls, open up opacity, and I can start to blend with opacity. So you can see it and make things darker and animate the opacity if I wanted to. Alternatively, I can choose the blend modes and I can um, soft light. This gives me a nice, vivid look. Gives you a lot more power. You can see what it's like if I simply turn it on and off. That's it off, that's it on, just using a blend mode. So black video is great for putting underneath titles, for uh, adding uh, effects. So I could choose black video and I could go to effects. And I could go to video effects, generate, and let's say uh, a cell pattern. So click and drag, drop the cell pattern on top. And I've got a really weird look because that's the cell pattern on black video blended on the video below. So black video is a great option to have, and below black video you have color matte. A color matte is essentially the same thing as black video, but you choose the color. So you choose OK, and then rather than having black, you could choose it, if you wanted to, bright green. Well, let's make it brighter green there, bright green. And you can have color matte, you can call it green matte, green matte. Hit return there, and I can drop that on top of my... Um, my black video there. And of course I could still, if I wanted to, blend my green in there, which could give some really interesting results. There you go. <laughs> Instantly made my ship look as if, uh, well the ship's seasick and the whole area is seasick. There you go. So that's how you can use these color mats. They can be great for going underneath text, going underneath other items, but also as you can see for blending. And of course, um, just showing you this, if I want to play with how green it looks, say I just want to add a very slight tint to it, I can dial down the opacity. So that's 20%, 19 20%, just so that you can just see it, just add that little bit of extra. And you can make it any colour you like with the colour mat. Okay, so those are different bits and pieces. I'm going to delete those from my timeline, so I don't really want those. What else can I create? Well, I can create a universal counting leader. What's that? Well, let's click to create. It says, uh, it gives me all the uh, usual settings for my sequence. Click OK. And it's going to say, OK, well, what colors do you want? Well, you can go through all these options yourself. I'm just going to create one and show you what it looks like. Click OK. And you'll have seen this a hundred times before, but you didn't realize it. So if I hit play, just like the beginning of a film, eight, seven, six, five, four, three action there you go so that's how you can create something that looks fantastic for previewing or heading up your footage as you send it off to your client for review so your client doesn't suddenly have it starting bang without any warning they've got a countdown they're ready to watch and they can see what's going on you don't have to use all of it if you don't want all the splicing stuff at the, the beginning you can simply trim it back to where it says eight and then you can have it straight from eight with all the other bits and pieces and then go straight from 8 just to give your client a little bit of warning. So it's a great way of heading up footage to demonstrate to people that this is not the final version, this is an edit version ready for them to watch. So I would make use of that uh, particularly when you're previewing footage to your customer. So I'm going to get rid of that. And finally in the new items we have this odd one which says transparent video. You sort of say, okay, what do I want transparent video for? Well if I add it on top of there, uh, well, it's transparent. I can't see anything. What would I want to use that for? Well, you can add some effects to transparent video, but actually the, the best way of using transparent video is to add a, a particular effect to it, which is often seen again for client review. So you go down to video and you have a little effect there called timecode. Drag and drop that on top of your transparent video and look, you've got timecode, precise timecode. 
so that you can send off a piece of tape to your client and your client can start and stop it at a precise point and tell you well at 3 seconds and 24 frames I want you to cut and bring it back in at 1018 or however they want to do it so you can actually use transparent video just to hold things now that time code is not on my footage I've not added it to my footage it's completely separate from my footage so as an editor I can turn it on and off very quickly so that's a great use for transparent video and you can play with some of the other effects um, incidentally when it comes to um, having transparent video if you splice it so I'm going to choose my razor tool up here and I cut it in half just here you'll see that the time code resets at a cut point sometimes that's useful sometimes that's not useful if you want to avoid this and you actually want to have it so that it stays all the way through and you can do multiple cuts after your client has said they want it one of the best things to do is just to take transparent video the length that you want to have your time code going for so say you have a, a 10 minute tape you create 10 minutes of blank video stick the time code on there and then render that out render it with an alpha channel obviously and then you can bring that in as a set item and it won't reset when you splice it because it's a rendered piece of footage as opposed to a much more synthetic piece of footage so those are the sorts of things that you can create and use from your project panel however there is one other thing I want to show you so I'm just going to delete this uh, this transparent video and this is found in actual fact in a similar place to the project panel just next to it the resource central and uh, the resource central usually starts up like this and you've got all kinds of tutorials and bits and pieces that you can look at which are all very useful indeed but also if you go to templates you've got a whole series of templates there available for you to use now you can browse them with this drop down here we've got corporate education entertainment general government sports technology travel wedding I'm gonna go to travel click on travel and I've got a whole series of templates well let's say that template um, now this template cloud slide looks okay well I can click on this little down arrow here and it will download that template to my system it's a fairly quick download thankfully and then it will tell me that it has added it to my project panel and if I go to my project panel there it is the cloud slide now I can drag that and drop it on top of my footage and there I have the cloud slide now the cloud slide is actually a title so I can double click it and it opens it up in my titler or my title editing window or whatever you want to call it and then I can go in there and I can actually select individual bits there's my main title and I can choose my title tool double click in there highlight it see houses so I can edit all the titles and use it in my project I didn't have to do anything to create this it was created for me you can see it's been created with a logo bitmap um, so it's not very modifiable but uh, certainly all the titles are synthetic and you can change all of those so that's how you can download and use lots of different bits and pieces in your project well I hope you found that useful my name's Andrew Davis, and thank you for watching goodbye mm -hmm.